food costs are higher than ever before. In fact, for the month of September this year, food prices were up almost 9%. If you're interested in some tips and tricks on how to save money on your food spending, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel, This and That. Every Monday, I will be uploading new content to share with you. If you like the content, I hope you will consider subscribing. All of us right now are feeling the crunch when it comes to the costs of just about everything. We need to eat, so talking about how to save money when it comes to grocery shopping felt like the right thing to talk about. And I have a bunch of tips and tricks and not all of these may work for you and your family, but hopefully some of them will help. Since I started doing some of these ideas, we've cut our spending in half. And you might have seen one of my shorts videos where I posted five ways to save on grocery shopping. This is an extended version of that YouTube shorts or my Facebook reel that you might have seen, where I go into greater detail how you as a family of one or maybe a family of 10 can save money on grocery shopping. As I mentioned in my intro, inflation has gone up 8.5% since last year for the month of September. We're almost 9% more on the same goods that we're buying now that we did last year. That's crazy. There are ways to save money when you can. And I'm gonna go over some of these things with you today. So one of the first ones is to adopt a meal plan. And you might be asking, what the heck is meal planning? Meal planning is when you figure out either for the week or for the month, what you or your family are going to be eating. It allows you to make a grocery list and it allows you to know what you need to buy on your grocery list. And if you go a step further with meal planning and you do a freezer inventory, a pantry inventory, a fridge inventory, you know exactly what you already have. So when you go to make your grocery list, you might, okay, I need, I'm making tacos. I need to brown, buy some either ground beef or some turkey. Um, I already have lettuce. I already have the taco mix. Oh, I need shells. You can sit and write down your list. It's so much easier. I actually have an in-depth video about meal planning and if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about meal planning or how I meal plan for myself and my family, feel free to check out the link. I'll post it above and I'll also have it posted below for you. So the second thing to do when it comes to saving money is to have a simple menu and to keep staple pantry items on hand. And what I mean by this is we are creatures of habit. Most of us have go-to meals that ourselves or our family members really like, and we tend to make those meals quite frequently. So it makes sense to have some of those staple items on hand, our favorite proteins, our favorite vegetables, our favorite pastas, our favorite soups. By having those items on hand, it also means that you're spending less at the grocery store because if you always buy a certain pasta and it goes on sale, you can buy a couple of boxes and you can put it away, saving money because you're buying it at a time when it's a reduced price instead of, hey, I'm out of it and now I gotta go pay full price at the store or I gotta wait a couple of weeks until it goes on sale. One of the next ways to save is to take advantage of leftovers. You can take a meal that you are creating and you can even plan that meal for a future meal for that week. And as an example of this, so I bought a rotisserie chicken at our local wholesale club for $4.99. So we had chicken dinner for one night. I already had the gravy on hand. I grow a garden, so I had potatoes. I also had frozen peas that I always keep in the freezer. So we had a small chicken dinner. I then took the leftover chicken from the rotisserie chicken and we had chicken and vegetables. The vegetables were some zucchini and squash we had gotten for some friends of ours. And then a third meal that I made was I made a chicken pot pie. I always keep the pre-made 
crusts on hand that you can buy in the fridge section of your grocery store. Potatoes from my garden because when I made the chicken dinner, I had boiled up some extra potatoes, cut them up, had them prepped and ready for when I made my chicken pot pie. I had the rotisserie chicken. I have, always have cans of cream of chicken, which I use for the gravy. I had frozen peas and frozen vegetables already in my freezer. So I totaled up how much it cost me and of course i had several free items because of the garden and some friends of ours but it cost me at the store about 11.50 to make three meals to feed three people so this is what i mean by taking advantage of leftovers you can use those leftovers plan them into your meal plan which was our first tip that we learned about and our second tip was having the staple pantry. So I already had these items. I didn't have to go out and buy anything but the chicken and everything else I already have on hand. So take advantage of those leftovers when there's big meals like the holidays and you know you're going to either come home with food from family members' parties or you're hosting and you know you're going to have stuff. Make soups, make salads, um, tacos. There's so many different things that you can make. There's so many wonderful recipes that are available online if you get stuck with what to do with something. The next thing I'm going to talk about may not apply to everyone. You might not have the space, you might not have the time, but part of this one might work for you. And that is to keep your own garden and to visit farmers markets. If you are able to have your own garden, even if it's a small one, and it's plants that you can grow in a container. It is amazing how much money that you can save by having fresh produce available. And if you're able to have a larger garden and you already can or, you know, freeze you understand how much money you can save. We have a very small, it's a modest garden that I do every year. I do cucumbers, I do potatoes, beans, tomatoes, I do green peppers. It's a very small garden, but it produces a lot. And I'm able to freeze and use these things at different times of the year. The other thing is if you can't have a garden, you don't have the space, you don't have a time, take advantage of farmer's markets. We have a friend of ours and some of the things that we don't grow, we buy from him and his prices are cheaper than going to Walmart and any of the local markets. And I'm buying directly from him it's fresh. He doesn't use any chemicals. I know where it's coming from. And I'm also helping a local family. And I also, I'll usually buy onions from him and cut them up and do the same thing I, I do with my peppers. And I'll chop them up and portion them out and I'll have them frozen. This leads me to my next idea of how you can save money. And that is frozen vegetables. And you might be saying, oh, frozen vegetables. Oh, they're full of salt and they're frozen. They're not fresh. But I used to feel like that. I was like, I, I can't buy that. I need, I need fresh broccoli. Um, I end up buying frozen peas and frozen broccoli. And we use these quite a bit at home. I can just take out what I need and cook them up in a pan. And they're actually really inexpensive, especially the stuff that they have at Walmart. I get a big bag of peas. They used to be $2. They went up to, I think, like $2.28 now. And that bag lasts forever. I can make all kinds of meals. Like I made my chicken dinner and I used those peas. And I made the chicken pot pie and used those peas. You can use those frozen vegetables anytime you want. And one of the other things, like as an example with the broccoli, I buy a clear bag of broccoli from a local grocery store so I can see what I'm getting in the bag. It's another one. I think it's like uh, maybe $2.50 a bag, maybe a little bit less than that. And the advantage of that is you're paying cheaper than buying it fresh and you have a lot less waste. When you buy broccoli by the pound, you have that big old hunk of stock that's on the bottom and you're paying for that weight. And I don't know many people that eat the big giant stock part. So you end up throwing it away. When you buy the ones, especially in a clear bag where you can see what you're getting before you buy it, ours are all just short pieces of what we would normally eat of the broccoli anyway. So I'm paying for the actual product that I'm going to eat. I'm not paying for that extra weight that we're, we're not going to even eat. So it's cost effective in that way as well. One of the next tips is stock up. When they have stock up sales and really, really good prices at the grocery store, that's the time when you want to buy those staple pantry items. 
as an example, all summer, one of our local grocery stores had a digital coupon for 85.15 ground beef for $2.99 a pound. You could buy two packages and generally the packages were between three and four pounds a piece. So what I was able to do is, is I would come home and I would portion those out. I would vacuum seal them, put the dates on them and put them in the freezer. So right now, because I took advantage of those stock up sales all summer, our freezer is going to be full all the way until the spring when they start having those sales again. During the winter time, you don't see sales as well on meats and vegetables because it's out of season. Um, so whenever stores are having those really good sales, if it's pasta sauce, if it's a pasta, um, anything that you can keep a long time. I mean, we don't want to buy things and then they go bad because we're not using them. So make sure you're being smart about what you stock up on. The next one is to create a food budget and a grocery list. So one of the first steps to budgeting is to figure out how much we can actually afford. There are some really great resources available online to us. There are YouTube videos that go into greater detail about budgeting, not only for food, but also for your other bills. There are books and there are also spreadsheets that can help you fill all this information in. It's very important to find out how much you generally spend on your groceries for the month. And this is food like milk, eggs, meats, cheeses. This isn't laundry detergent or cleaners. This is food only. It's amazing how much money we spend on food during the year. This year, a single person will spend on average $172 to $358 per month on groceries. A family of two will spend between $402 and $799 per month. And a family of three, which is two adults and a child under the age of 10, will spend $722 a month. These are averages. They, base, they change based on where you live, what the income is for that area. So some areas are going to be higher and some areas are going to be lower depending on the economy in your area. So for a full month, I saved all my receipts and I added up all of the food items and it was $800 a month. I did it for one more month and it was around the same thing. I think it was like $7.85. So I was pretty consistent with what I was spending on food because we tend to eat the same things in our house. By adopting some of these ideas, we have been able to cut our food spending in half. We're spending about $400 a month now to feed a family of three. That's two adults and a toddler. That's a really crazy savings. So that's $400 a month that we are able to put somewhere else. So be sure to make a grocery list to bring with you to the grocery store. And this will help keep you on target with your budget. And it will also allow you to buy the things that you actually need. Um, it doesn't matter if you use a pad of paper, a piece of scrap paper, if you use an app that is a grocery list app, or you know, however you choose to make your grocery list. You can be as simple or as complicated with your list as you need to be. But just be sure to have a grocery list because this helps keep you accountable and it keeps you on your budget. There are some people, their grocery list has the prices next to it and how much they're allowed to spend at a specific store. That is what keeps you on point. Feel free to do that. And there are some really great videos about how to stay on point with budgeting. The next tip is to eat at home as much as possible. If you're somebody who doesn't really like to cook or you're really busy, you're a mom or a professional and you don't have a lot of time, look into freezer meals, look into crock pot meals. There are some really fabulous people out there sharing their um, recipes. Use their tips and tricks to help you with your life to make your life easier. It is amazing how much money you save by eating at home. My husband and I, we never used to eat out a lot, but before we had my daughter and we were both working, uh, we would usually have to eat maybe two, two times a week would be average. Now we've gotten it cut down to, so once a week we've been going out to eat and all the other meals at home I make. And you may think that's a lot of cooking, but as I mentioned, take advantage of all the easy ways there are to cook that you can still have healthy meals, but you are prepping ahead of time or you're cooking ahead of time and freezing or you're making a, a freezer meal where you're putting all the ingredients in a bag. 
it's amazing how much money we save by eating at home. An average American family, which is a family of three, spends about $3,500 a year eating out or $300 per month. If you add $300 for eating out and $722 for food shopping, you're spending $1,022 a month on food. If you remember how I talked about leftovers in this video, using your leftovers, going out and making these meals specifically where they other meals revolve around your leftovers, you are saving so much money. So eat at home as much as possible. The next tip is to pay attention to digital coupons and grocery store apps. The way that the world is working now, we're pulling away from paper flyers. You see a lot of grocery stores that are starting to pull back and they're pushing for you to use their apps. It really is important to learn about these digital coupons and these apps because as an example, we have one local grocery store that you can really save when you look at their digital coupons. And it's not always, so you got to pay attention because there are some times of the year, as I mentioned earlier about buying meat and getting it with a digital coupon. Sometimes a digital coupon in the winter is $3.99 for the same item that's $2.99 all summer. So it's important to pay attention to what really is a good deal. In the 12 months that my family has used digital coupons and wholesale coupons, we saved $175 at the wholesale club just on coupons and almost $300 with sales and coupons at a local market. So that's a lot of money that's staying in our pocket. It's $475 this year that we've saved by using coupons. So really pay attention. Don't forget your local markets because a lot of local markets are starting their own apps now. So be sure that you look at what is available. The next way to save money is to pay attention to your food shopping trends. And what I mean about this is don't chase every little sale. Even though it might be an item that you you like to stock up on, unless you can stock up on it a lot and really save yourself some money during the year, it's not worth it to maybe drive 40 miles out of the way or 50 miles out of the way and spend the fuel and the time chasing little sales. Take advantage of the stores that you shop at often that have consistently really good sales and consistent good everyday prices. That's why a lot of people go to Walmart and Target and wholesale clubs because they consistently have good prices on their items. So if you walk into Walmart, you might know that a certain soup is always for 92 cents or certain canned vegetables are 58 cents, where you might go elsewhere and those same vegetables are, you know, 89 cents a piece instead of 58 cents. So pay attention to those sales and those everyday prices that you can take advantage of all the time. There's tons of videos where you can see, I like watching See Mindy Mom. I believe that's what the channel is. I love watching her do these meal challenges where she'll go into Aldi's or she'll go into Walmart or Costco and she will have to spend a certain money and feed her family of five. And it's amazing what she can make and how little she spends. And because she's going for these everyday sales. Another tip is to pay attention to food store brands. Sometimes the food store brands are just as good as the name brands and you're paying for the name brand. And sometimes some of these items are made at the very same factory. As an example, I went to Target and I looked at some of their products and compared them to some name brand prices and it was crazy the difference. Same thing with my local market, with Walmart. A lot of the times you can get a really good deal and a good savings on buying the store brand. The next one, don't skip the reduced food section. There are a lot of times they are, it's kind of like scratch and dent of the grocery store. There'll be items that have a dented box or a, it's a dented can, or it's something that's discontinued and the market's not carrying it anymore, but there's nothing wrong with it. Or it's going, it could be something that's going to expire soon. That's usually a big one, especially for baked goods. It's usually baked goods and cereals and canned goods that end up in these places a lot. But a lot of the times if you shop these, you can find, name brand and store brand 
food items that you can buy that are a lot cheaper. As an example, I my daughter loves Cheerios. It's like one of her favorite snacks. So I was able to get a family size bag of Cheerios for a dollar seventy five compared to paying like four ninety nine almost five dollars for the same box at local retailers. So don't skip the reduced section because there are some times that you can stock up on items that you are already going to be making for this week. The last tip that I'm going to give you today for saving at the grocery store is to eat before you go food shopping. And you might say, what? But let me tell you, it really makes a difference when you've had a snack or a meal before you go grocery shopping. So I try to go out on a full stomach when I go food shopping, because when you are hungry is when you tend to blow your food budget and when you tend to blow your grocery list because you're hungry and that looks really good and this looks really good and my stomach is telling me that I need to buy this when I don't really need to buy it and my wallet is telling me, ouch. So make sure you have something to eat before you go food shopping so that way you are not spending extra. I hope that some of these ideas and tips can help you and your family as a starting off point to save money. And I hope you're able to save as much money, if not more than my family does. If you have ideas on how to save money, feel free to drop in the comments. I'd love to hear how others are saving money, what you're doing. That way we can pass on the savings and the ideas to others. I hope you enjoyed this video today. As always, stay safe and be well.